What if I'm walking over the bridge? There's no way to move the body. So I... I must have just... I'm confused, I guess. Was the snow still falling? Or had it stopped? Does it really matter that much? I mean, it seems that there's... There is a way to cross a burning bridge. Hmm. So it was just a misunderstanding, I see. This is a photo of Dusky Bridge after it burnt down from the, light, from the lightning blast. It was taken on the morning after the incident. It certainly was burned to a crisp, and... One of the suspicion wires even snapped. It's amazing the whole bridge didn't fall. Clearly, it would be impossible to carry a corpse across a bridge in this condition. Dusky bridge, bridge photo, photo taken in the, the morning, morning after, after the crime. crime. Unless I do something to discredit this testimony, it's gonna be deemed as deemed as the truth, and Maya will be accused of murder. Right. I'm only gonna say it one more time. It is only human to err, and. Only humans can spot the errors of their ways. The more sense he makes, the less sense he makes. All right, Mr. Wright. Please begin your final cross-examination. I think you can get this quite easily. All right. So... Just hear the sentence. Other than walking over the bridge, there's no way to move the body. So I, I must have just gotten confused, I guess. Was it still, still falling or had it stopped? Does it really matter that much? Or are you saying that there's a way to cross a burning bridge? Is there a way to cross a burning bridge? Is there a way to cross a burning bridge? Perhaps we uh, have evidence that shows. Well, we have a, a woman. A method. And a jumping in the middle of the, of the bridge, uh, Larry's painting. Don't exactly know what they would have been doing, but Good job. Uh, you got it. Wow! Immediately, this is. Yep. Too fucking easy. Easy. Uh, a dead body flying over a burning bridge. <laughs> I would exactly rule out the possibility. What? <laughs> You're saying it's possible. Don't make me laugh. The only thing that's possible about your claim is that it's been pulled out of thin air. I don't know about that. In any case, we have a witness who did see it happen. Who, who is it? Who is this witness? I can't check it out here. I've got to keep on the attack and go, go, go. Miss Elise Donum's brilliant and highly gifted apprentice. Larice Donum! Brilliant. Highly gifted apprentice? Remember what he said in his testimony. That night he was at the Mountain Shack, Heavenly Hall, and that's when he witnessed the event. I think you've all seen this sketch before. It's an exact drawing of what he witnessed that night. Are you serious? Today's not April Fool's Day, is it? Mr. Wright? Are you seriously claiming that the victim flew through the air? And you're using this pathetic scribble to support your argument? Uh-oh. The judge looks like he's about to blow a gasket. Huh. Well, Chite, there's nowhere for you to hide now. Other than looking like it was drawn by a six-year-old, does this sketch prove anything? Yes. I'm pretty sure it does, and I'm gonna prove it. Listen, I know your tricks. You're trying to turn this whole thing upside down. If you're so eager to turn this case upside down, why not start with a sketch? Upside down. What did Godo Why did Godo say that? All right then, let's hear the defense's theory. What exactly is this sketch trying to show? I don't think old Whiskerface is going to forgive any more mistakes. All right, Phoenix. Look carefully and think it over. This sketch drawn by Larice Donum is... Well, okay, so it's upside down. Someone is falling down. 
off the bridge. Which would... Just know that somebody was below the bridge. Below the bridge. If it was upside down. Right. Rather than somebody falling off the bridge, someone's below the bridge. How are they just levitating in the air right there? Is there an explanation? Um... Unless they were hanging off one of the suspension wires that had broke off. Okay. So what is this? Huh? So what am I choosing? Exactly what happened. <laughs> of course the victim was flying through the air. You can see it right there in the sketch. Whoosh! What the fuck? You know, you're starting to remind me of yesterday's witness. What? That was the last thing I wanted to hear. Do you have any evidence that the victim flew through the air? Just so you know, I haven't discovered a giant human catapult in the temple yet. Oh, I wish they had. Even if you're a lousy- I didn't- why did I think I wasn't this character? Even if you're a lousy lawyer, at least you're one cup's worth of entertainment. I think we should skip the penalty this time. Mm. There must be some way. I just know it. There must be a way to use Larry's sketch to show the truth of what happened. Alright. Uh, fucking god damn it, you piece of shit! Well, he was upside down. He saw it upside down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. Okay. Jesus Christ. Uh, complete contradiction. Oh. Something's obviously funny about this sketch. I'm no odd critic, but even I can see that. No, no, that's not what I mean, Your Honor. Larice Donham stated it over and over, that this sketch was exactly as he saw it. However, if we're trying to believe his testimony, then the sketch contradicts reality as we know it. Contradicts reality? Huh. This is getting interesting. Looks like you're back to that finger pointing thing again. Okay, Trit, what exactly contradicts reality as we know it? Uh, these. Take that! But sure, yes. It's this wire connected to the bridge. The wire? But good My favorite shot. <laughs> <laughs> is it the thing that contradicts reality? It is indeed. And shows the reality it supposedly conflicts with. Joe, is something that would point out how the sketch contradicts reality. Um, uh, it? Yes. 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 That's a photo of Dusky Bridge, correct? Yes, now compare the sketch and the photo for a minute. In the sketch, the wires appear to be above the guard wires. But on the actual Dusky Bridge... Jumping Jehoshaphat! The wire- The wires are BELOW THE GUARD WIRES! What? Order, order, order! The sketch is somewhat different than what's depicted in the photo! However, isn't it likely that the artist just saw it wrong? Perhaps he just drew it wrong? By the way, it sounds like you're just wrong. With someone like Larissa, I admit a mistake is a definite possibility. But then that begs the question. Why did he make a mistake? What was the reason? Are you saying you know the answer to that? Listen! Think back, alright? Remember what Larissa was doing when he witnessed this event? He was at Heavenly Hall waiting for a lover that was never going to come. He waited and waited and he finally he laid down. <laughs> but then, lightning shoots from the sky and sets the bridge aflame. Now ponder what sort of position Loris must have been in at that time. He was lying on his back, which is why he remembered the scene the way he did. He was lying on his back? I can't see how it relates. But it does, your honor. That is the reason why the wires in the sketch go up instead of down. Ah, 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 ah. Uh. Away. 
Maurice Stoneham witnessed the event while he was lying on his back, face up. In other words, the scene that he saw was actually up, side, down. So then the sketch should actually... I think you finally get it, your honor. The correct way to view Larry Stoneham's sketch is like this. This is how it should actually look. The victim's body wasn't flying above the bridge. It was actually swinging below. That's right, just like a pendulum. Ridiculous! Order, order, order! Of all the things to say, a pendulum! The bridge was burning to a crisp. There was no way to get across it. But if the body had been found at the inner temple, it would have caused problems. Big problems! This is where the criminal decided to take a gamble. They used the burning bridge to get the body across to the other side. And a pendulum was the only way to get it done. Let's think about this for a minute, shall we? Dusky Bridge is about 20 yards long, which means it's about that far from the inner temple to the opposite cliff. Yes, that sounds right. In, other, in order to cover that distance with a pendulum, you need a rope at least 10 yards long. To get a rope that long, you have to plan ahead. The lightning strike that night can only have been an accident. So it doesn't make sense that the culprit would have prepared the rope beforehand. So then, they didn't have to get the rope ready. The rope was already right in front of them. What? I'm saying that it was just a matter of using what was already there. In that case, Mr. Wright, please give us an explanation to support your theory. What makes you think the criminal had the rope on hand to create a pendulum? What's the rope? Hmm? Or what's the vote? The rope. What, what am I looking at? This tiny rope right here? It's the only rope we got. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's this. It's it's the support thing, yeah. The suspension wire. And the meaning and the meaning of this is. If you wanna rant, if if what the fuck? If you wanna know where the rope comes from. It's hanging right there in front of your glorious beard, your honor. Ah, ha, ah, ah! This, this is one of the wires from the bridge. When the lightning struck the bridge and set it on fire, one of the suspension wires came loose from its anchor. The criminal didn't have any time to waste. So they tied the wire around Elise Stoneham's body. because there was simply no other way to move the body. Huh. Mr. Godo? Godo, hmm? It seems that Mr. Godo is more focused on his coffee than answering my question. It seems that the odds of a rope being readily available were very high. So I suppose that it's not an impossibility after all. Possible or impossible? That's not the question we need to ask. There's only one question. Did that really happen? Trite? Wonder if you could prove what happened to us. Do you have any actual evidence that the body was swung over like a pendulum? Well... Any proof it was swung over... like a pendulum? They called the the animation we saw. Uh, fuck. Um, one detail we haven't cleared up yet for the pizza. Okay, the hood. We haven't... We've already... Yeah, we know about the hood. The okay, hood was given to oh, okay, we know about the hood. Okay. Um, one piece of evidence we have... Oh, yeah. the, 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 the... Maya thing? That doesn't mean shit. 
my thing. Yeah, the the lantern. No, we don't. Oh, what was this? Near dust bridge has blood on it. Came from the victim's staff. Yeah. I don't see how that means. That anyway. was found. Where that blue up is. That's where that was found. Okay. Well, that would at least explain if the body was drugged over there to explain why that was up behind there. Yeah. Uh, Wait, no, because it, it landed over there. Okay. They swung it over and it landed over there, it popped off, they left it. And how do we know it landed? Because it had snow on it or some shit? Okay. Or it didn't have snow on it or some shit. Well, or because it's not on the staff. How do we know the body fl uh, landed there? We know the body landed there. Like they could have just, they could have just took the orb and then put it there. Okay, mm, what proves that it came from the body? Hmm. Um, because there's blood on it. It's just got blood on it. I'll give it to you for now, but there's still one thing you're missing. Before I present my evidence, let me review what we know so far. According to this photo, one of the wires snapped. Looking at that map, we can see it's the one that was in front of the inner temple. So then, that was the spot where the criminal... Yes, precisely. Now let us consider the body's movement by looking at the overhead map again. If the body was pushed from this point here... It would have dropped on the opposite bank at approximately this point. Did you say drop? Well, he must have failed to catch the body on the other bank. What makes you think something like that happened? Because I have evidence to suggest her body dropped some distance. Oh, okay. What kind of evidence? Take a look at this autopsy report. It says here that her body fell about 10 feet after her death. Yeah, see, that's the thing you're missing. That's right. 10 feet, huh? That's most likely the height difference between the two sides. The body overswung due to forward momentum, but then came loose and fell about 10 feet. And then, as a result of the landing impact, this crystal sphere was knocked loose. That's... Yes, this bloodstained amethyst crystal. It's the one that came off Miss Elise Stoneham's staff. And even more important is the place where this crystal sphere was found. Indeed, I believe it's already marked on this overhead map. The crystal was found. Ah! Precisely, Your Honor. In the very spot where the pendulum would arrive if given the right amount of speed. This explains your theory quite well, Mr. Wright. You provided us with a way the body could have been moved that night. An impressive deduction, Mr. Wright. Most impressive. <laughs> Mr. Wright. I thought this cold coffee might help you cool you down. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Godo? That was a dark and bitter guess you that you made, Trick. You forgot about one thing. Oh? And what would that be? The aroma. Huh? You clean yourself fast. <laughs> the coffee's most reliable accomplice is a deep and profound aroma. Um, the rest of the court doesn't speak, uh, Kafanese. Uh, can you elaborate a bit more? If the criminal has sent the body to the other side like you say, then naturally there must have been an accomplice lying in wait to catch it. An accomplice? The criminal wasn't able to cross Dusky Bridge. So, who collected the body? What do you have to say about that, Trite? Mr. Godo is correct. This can't be the work of a single person. Well, Mr. Wright, you know what you must do. Yes, Your Honor. The body couldn't have made it to Hazakura Temple without an accomplice. Very well, then, if you would please, Mr. Wright. Who was the person that received the body on the Hazakura Temple side? So we're saying it was thrown over by uh, Iris. No. No? Who threw it over? We're saying that it's just over. 
But who's... It's on the other side. Who ca Don't worry about who threw it. Mm. Worry about who caught it. Oh, shit. Who because we it? know something for certain about where one person was at the time. We know Larry was over there. We know Phoenix was over there. We know... Okay, so it wasn't Maya, it wasn't Mia, it wasn't Pearl, it wasn't Goto, it wasn't Gumshoe. I guess it could have been Bikini, although that would have been insane. Uh, she has a terrible back. She can yeah, not carry a body. Exactly. And plus, Elise is the victim. Iris was already. Wait, go back. Uh, Larry was over there. It wasn't Larry. It wasn't Francisca. It wasn't Edgeworth. So it's either. It's Dahlia. It's Dahlia or it's. How could it be Morgan Fay? Or I guess it could be Maya. What? Maya's on the other side. He, yeah, I she's know. She's in a temple. Uh -huh. Who is on? The, who do we know for certain is on the Hazakura side? Larry. <laughs> he was. We know for certain. Yes, but do you think that Larry would have done this? No, I don't. Uh, we know Iris was over there. Iris was over there doing what? Uh, Iris was over there. Uh. She was fucking uh, on the snowmobile. Yes. Right. What did we spend the entire first trial doing? We were talking to her and we're like, we didn't say a word to her. Oh yeah. The first trial. We spent the whole time talking to bikini. And what did bikini see? And bikini saw uh, tracks. What is the most important thing that Bikini saw? Uh, Bikini saw the murder. She saw Iris plunging the shishishito into her back. Okay. Yep. So, <clears throat> who caught the body on the other side, and who is the accomplice of this murder? Nah. No, it's not Bikini. It's no. Oh! <laughs> nah, it's not Bikini, man. It's not Bikini. <laughs> well, I, you know, guess it's Iris. I just, I said that. I said it's either Iris or Dahlia. <laughs> and I, I guess it's Iris. <laughs> no, you said it's Dahlia. A hundred percent it's Dahlia. <laughs> it can only be you, Sister Iris. Huh? Ah! But I, I... I don't see why you're so surprised. The only way to transport the body from Dusky Bridge is by snowmobile. But with her bad back, Sister Bikini could never pick up a body like that. You're the only one that could have managed it. Right? We're even listening to the witness's testimony. On the night of the crime, this little cutie pie was on cleanup duty in the inner turning a temple garden after the mother daughter bloodbath. I haven't forgotten, but have you, Mr. Godo? This witness was also seen at Hazakura Temple. Desecrating the corpse of the victim! Um, strange indeed. It's almost as if. On that night, the defendant was in two different places at the same time. Sister Iris, let me ask you something. Why didn't you mention it when you first gave your testimony? I mentioned what? The pendulum, of course. Using the sketch drawn by an eyewitness, I have established how the body was moved using the burnt-out bridge. Which means it's now a fact that this occurred. Something you should have already known. No, I, I had no idea. I, I didn't know anything about a pendulum. But the body couldn't have been passed along to the other side without your help. So you should have known about it. In fact, it'd be impossible for you to be clueless about this whole thing. Unless you're not really Iris to begin with. What? How can you say that, Mr. Wright? What? What kind of nonsense is this? You're saying this witness isn't Iris of Hasakura Temple? Objection. Are you serious, Trite? You... You mean... This woman is... Oh, who said this an hour ago? There's no one besides Iris that could have received the corpse that night. Now I get it. Now I know why I've been sick to my stomach this whole trial. Why her whole demeanor changed so suddenly from yesterday. And why she's trying to pin this murder on Maya. 
The woman that's standing there at the witness stand. Her real name is... Dahlia Hawthorne! I never thought I'd have to utter your name again. Let alone see you. It's been a long time, Dahlia Hawthorne. Hawthorne? Sister Iris had a twin sister. And you're looking at her. Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. That name rings some bells. Distant bells, but bells nonetheless. Nonetheless. <laughs> it's just your imagination, Gramps. This file contains all the re relevant data about Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh yes, I remember now that case five years ago. My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I just want to say it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all mine! No, the honor is all mine! But according to this, Dahlia Hawthorne is already dead. It says her execution was carried out last month. So what? Death has no meaning in this courtroom. What? Order, order, order! Wait a moment. How can you... My sister... She's already dead. What kind of... You of all people should already understand. After all... The blood of the master of the Korean channeling technique flows within that body. The Korean channeling technique? Now where have I heard that? That's right, you're not Dahlia Hawthorne herself. You're the spirit of Dahlia, currently inhabiting the body of a spirit medium. What an exciting story. Exciting, but quite impossible. You're asking us to buy that Dahlia Hawthorne just happened to be channeled by someone on the very night of the murder to a temple where her twin sister, Iris, was. Well, if you're going to put things that way, then yes. Objection. We're supposed to believe that a coincidence like that just happens? Objection. Naturally, it was no coincidence. The whole thing was part of a plan from the very beginning. It's all written right here in these instructions. <laughs> What's that? These instructions were written by your mother, Morgan Fay, And part of the plan called for Dahlia Hawthorne to be channeled. That night, there were two irises at Hazakura Temple. Two of them. Even the time of the channeling was planned out. As soon as you hear the lights out bell, in other words, 10 p.m. However, Iris was seen before dinner time. That means the Iris that was at dinner was the real Iris. And the Iris who gave me this hood in the main hall was also the real Iris. Meaning that the Iris sister bikini saw at the inner temple was someone else dressed as her, namely one Dahlia Hawthorne. Do you even know what you're saying, Chite? This whole channeling the spirit of Dahlia Hawthorne business? Yes, it's true that you found plans to talk about it. However, there's one thing that's perfectly clear. The witness currently standing in the witness stand is the real Iris. What? What? Calm down and remember what you know about the night of the crime. After meeting Sister Bikini, the Dolly Hawthorne that had been channeled, would have been stranded at the inner temple due to the lightning strike. It was later that the body was moved by Pendulum. That's right. Naturally, that would mean that the Iris that received the body was... the real Iris. Are you with me so far? Yes. After being notified of what happened, the police came to Hazakura Temple's main hall. There, they found Iris in her room and arrested her. And ever since, she's been under police super, super, uh, supervision at the detention center. Yes, I suppose. I can't deny any of that. <sighs> Thank goodness. 
Looks like he finally, he's finally convinced. Something still seems off. Way off. I'm still not convinced that Iris here is the same one from the other night. Huh. I suppose you're about to say something really ridiculous. Look, the real Iris in the spirit of Dahlia somehow switched places. So switch places? To be perfectly honest, there are still quite a few things I don't understand, but I do know. But unless we confirm that the witness's identity... Unless we confirm the witness's identity, we can't continue with this trial. Iris doesn't have the spiritual power needed to channel Dahlia. Which means... We must have switched places somewhere. Well, Mr. Wright, since the time she has arrested at Hazakara Temple, has there been any chances for Iris to switch places with Dahlia Hawthorne? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, good. Good job. Your Honor, I think there might have been one chance. Oh, explain yourself. Yesterday, for a few minutes, Iris's whereabouts were unknown. Unknown? <clears throat> what do you mean? What I mean is, there was a span of time in which Iris was able to move about freely, unsupervised. Well, who was it? Who would give a murder suspect time to move about freely like that? I'm sorry. I know you didn't mean to. It wasn't your fault. The person who gave Iris a chance to freely move about was... To freely move about? Yeah. There was a moment in time where I was, was unsupervised because something happened and this person let her go because of this event. Because of this event. Oh fuck, I'm totally blanking on this. I don't fucking remember. Uh, uh, let her go because of this event. Let her go. What did happen? Well, she was in the custody of Gumshoe, right? Not Gumshoe, no. Edgeworth. And what happened? He. Oh, fuck yeah, what did happen? Earthquake. Take that. That's right. <clears throat> this, this is Mr. Edgeworth, isn't it? Your Honor. There was a fairly large earthquake yesterday, was there not? An earthquake? Hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> oh my goodness! The inner temple! This kind of drama! <laughs> How could I have? She fled. She escaped. We went to the inner temple right away. And it's true. Iris was already there. However, they had already switched places by that point in time. When I arrived at the training hall, I was met by none other than Dahlia Hawthorne. That's quite enough already, Mr. Wright. Now see here. No judge in his right mind would consider the idea of spirit channeling and- Be quiet. Been a long time, Mr. Judge. The, that voice. Yes, I have to ask again. Hmm. Upon meeting a beautiful lady, I always ask for her name and profession. That's one of my rules. Dahlia Hawthorne, my current profession? Permanently retired. So you're not going to bother hiding your identity anymore, huh? Why should I? After all, I'm dead. There's really nothing you could do to punish me. What is going on here? <clears throat> Dahlia Hawthorne. I never thought we'd meet again. And I never thought we'd meet like this. But this time, 
I'll end it. For her, and for myself. And we'll do testimony of Dahlia Hawthorne. On the next episode, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and hit that bell so you can be notified every time that we upload every single day. You know, what I tried to do, okay? I tried to get Dahlia and Iris different voices. Mm -hmm. And then when they switched, I switched my Dahlia voice for Iris. Really? For that entire time. Oh. I tried to do that. So it's really quite a bit subtle, hopefully. Nice. If I watch this again, I can pick up on that. Because I'm a professional. Pro. Professional. I'm, I'm a pro. All right, I've got to go. Yep. Love you guys.